Greetings and welcome to A Better Tomorrow, a series of conversations with people in PAN. My name is Wendell Man Warren and I have the distinct pleasure of sitting at home with Mr. Duvon Stewart as we discover the man behind the music. So Duvon, let's start at the very beginning. Tell us how this all started for you. Very, very honored and privileged to mention Virginia Percival and Emerson Stewart, parents that brought life to an individual in 1976, Tobago. September 17th, it was a Friday afternoon. My, my mother, my mother was, was supposed to get paid. So I believe I come out on a, 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 a flourishing day, <laughs> money blossoming, you know. Mount St. George was the village, grew to um, a closely knit family, uncles, aunts, cousins. My mom and my dad was like steel pan players, but they never really had steel pan as a career. They just had it as a hobby. My dad used to work at the, the port in Tobago. My mother was a seamstress, and I was just how much I was growing up in my, in my early days, you know. Trent Dr. Tobago All Stars was the steel orchestra that they were all members of, both members of. My dad was the vice captain of the band, but I never really had the opportunity to go and see what he was doing every other night or every night or something like that. And this moment came along for me to accompany them down to the Paniard, seeing what he was doing, and I was intrigued by it. I can vividly, I was eight years, I was eight years old. What's your name? Duvon Stewart. How old are you? Eight years. When did you start playing here? After Carnival. What school you were at? Scarborough RC School. Do you do music there? No. So the only music you do is here? Yes. There were a lot of kids in the party yard, you know, running around, doing stuff like that. But I was close to my mom, to the point where when she got a break, I was going to take a pan six and was just going to nibble, 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 nibble. You no, know, she get a break, nibble, nibble. So I was never really a kid in the pan yard. I always used to be looking for mischief and doing mischievous things. I was just being mischievous, trying to see what it was doing with the instrument. And my dad got the opportunity and the privilege to bring pans home in the house, which was one of the biggest mistakes. The nibbling went on to being greedy, just wanted to eat it all soak it up all. And everything that I heard that was going on in the Paniard in Trinductive Big World Stars, I could have replicated it back onto the instrument when my dad used to bring home, with nobody teaching me anything. Mrs. Gwyneth Armstrong, she was the musical director for the Steel Orchestra, and they decided to start a youth band. And I was the first person enrolled in that band. The band comprises of youths on the western side of the island, schools like the Scarborough Junior Secondary, the Signal Hill Senior Comprehensive, the Bishop's High School, and we all came together, 1986, 1987. And um, Steel Band Junior Music Festival was the aim and the objective for the band to prepare for. And we came to Trinidad for the first time. Jean Pierre Complex was the venue, seen all these big bands and all these big schools at like the St. Augustine and the El Dorados and the, you name them, they were there. And we was like, little humble Tobago boys, you know, are we boys, are we girls, you know, we come to play fun and enjoy ourselves, you know? And around that point in time, I was given the opportunity to do a solo piece, which was prepared by Mrs. Gwyneth Armstrong, Sonata in C by Mozart. I can never forget that song. And before the conventional part of the competition took place, the soloist category took place. Dave Elcock, Sharon Pitt, presenters, announcers for the event, made my debut, walking out the aisles onto the track to perform Sonata in C, not knowing what I was getting into. I know to the point I was good, but there were some rough edges around. I placed fifth in the competition. With placing fifth, 
I got a call from my music teacher. She wants to speak to my parents. I spoke to her. And it ended right there. Not knowing that the late great Dr. Jit Samaru made a call trying to inquire who is this kid? He needs to have a mentor in that. So at the point in time I was doing theory music and practical music with Mrs. Gwyneth Armstrong at her home. And she was just like, curious now, your mommy and daddy talk to you? I said, about what? And um, they might be going to Trinidad to play pan and stuff like that. I said, but who? So um, it's looking like it, it could be Renegades or Moku Renegades. And I was blown away. I was happy. Coming from Tobago, living in Tobago, we all supported pan big time. Everybody had their, had their band with the love. My dad was a big, big, big Catelli All Stars fan. My mom was a big, big Desperados fan. And 1987, Pan in A minor, listening on the TV in Tobago, back in the days, you know, we had the antenna on top of the, um, the, 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 the roof, trying to get good coverage, good, good viewing, good vision, black and white TV to boot. And I heard this song and I was like, who's this man, boy? Great boy, listen to this, listen to this symphony playing, you know? And I think the band came third that year, to the second that year. And I said, well, you know, just following this footstep, you know? That blew me away. Just wanted to be on that part, listening to the work of this, this, this homogeneous that I got to discover. And coming to Trinidad and a frequent note to take part in different events and stuff like that. And by the way, in 1986, I came first in 12 and under. And that was like the, one of the big blow ups for Duvon Stewart. Your parents get asked you a question, where you want to be when you grow up? I know everybody want to be a doctor, want to be a lawyer, want to be a policeman, want to be a fireman. That question was posed to me at a very young age, you know? And I said, I want to be a pan man. I want to be a pan man. And then, and the, the, the stories came about. The steel band clash, the riots, the bloodsheds, uh, the, the whole nine. I, I, got, I got a view of what they knew at the point in time, but it wasn't a point they were trying to distract me of the decision that I wanted to make. It's just making me aware of what I'm going to get myself involved with. But I was so strong in my mind to overcome what history has placed for us, not to fall in that trap, to be a part of continuation, but rise out of the ashes and open new lights and stuff like that, where it can be a lucrative profession for me. I could safely say it's an occupation for me. When I was age eight, I could vividly remember it was something that was given to me. It wasn't forced on for me to accept. The support was there. Seeing, discovering what this instrument has done for the grandmasters and the virtuosos before me. Like the movie Lion King, the circle of life. Somebody has to take up the mantle one day to run that relay, to run that race for a period of time. Like Michael Jordan said, got to be like Mike. Everybody want to be like Mike. So I want to be a steel pan player. I wanted to be a, a, a musician by profession. And that burning desire grew every single day. When I finished school at Scarborough RC to run home, to get behind that pan, practice, practice, playing, practice, playing. Never wanted to be a police, never wanted to be a firefighter, never wanted to be a doctor, never wanted to be most of the traditional things parents ask their kids and the kids respond what they wanted to be. I wanted to be in pan. It was something that was embedded in me, but I had was to go deep down inside to find the greatness in me, to be confident to say, yes, this is what I wanted to do.
When I had Pan exposed to me in my home in Tobago, I was embraced to fend to new things with it. Just fall in love with it. Create a marriage between Devon Stewart and Steely Pan. And again, as I said, it was a mistake they make. And I never, ever turned back. I never turned back from, from pursuing the dream that I always wanted to become what I am today. I always wanted to live the dream of the slogan Star Trek, to go where no man has gone before with the instrument. I like movies. I may, I may quote a lot about it, you know? Yeah, references references from, from movies because I like to watch a lot, lot of movies. And these are the things that inspire me to, to, to go the long, long road in becoming what I am today. But that burning desire for loving Pan and being accepted around Pan was at the age of eight, nine years, eight, age eight, eight, nine. Nintendos and Ataris were things that those era, and I wasn't really a fun lover of, of, of those things, you know? I saw something and I just, I, I believe I, I was just so, so special and different at the same time too. Wanting to be around something, so that, that lick ling, nicky ling, lack a lang, ticky ding, tack. I said, wow. No. This is for me. Listening to Old Stars playing, listening to Renegades playing, listening to Death Brothers playing in the TV. Lick ting, lick ting. And I was just used to go back and transpose all these things back onto the intro because I had everything home in my house. And, th and th that, that was just. Again, it was smooth sailing for me, man, you know? It's like taking time to discover the greatness which is embedded in you. And I, I, I was exposed to it from early, you know? And it was a smooth, smooth trans, trans, transition and a transformation that blossomed to, to become what it is right now. So it sounds like you were willing to accept that you were different from early. Yeah, yeah, because um, I wasn't, I was a miserable child. I was still a little miserable. But um, being different is that it was a good thing because look, look what being different brought me today, you know? Being a, a face of steel pan today. I never know I'll reach this far. But at the end of the day, I know, thank God for blessing me for life, health and strength, for being around people who supported the journey, who believe in the process and who made it happen for us, but it happened today, you know. Let us go back to that call that Dr. Jit made to your music teacher. That was a fight. That was a fight. Mom was... Desperados, Dad was all stars. Jet Samro Call, Renegades is the band. How are they gonna do this thing? They had a little huddle meetings, a little conversation without me hearing. What do you wanna be when you grow up? You wanna be a still pan player, musician. So all the emphasis and support from the family, from granny, big auntie, big uncle, was just seeing Duvon Stewart flourish. Being <laughs> I believe I was given the responsibility at a young age to be the face of the family. Nobody on the outside couldn't talk nothing bad about Duvon Stewart. I had a whole 300 Spartans just waiting to respond. And, and that just like brought confidence within me, you know, to, to, to just go the extra mile to see the word family, how powerful it is, how loving and embracing it is to have these fellow loving ones around your space to, to support at the point in time too, you know, so. Um, but Tobago on the whole, you know, um, 12 and under 1986, you know, the 4th of December, 1986, I can never forget that day. Returned from Piaco to Crown Point and was one of the biggest grand feeling that I had. Embraced uh, the THA, Chief Secretary at the point in time, people at the airport, you know, people see me coming up with a trophy and stuff like that, you know. And 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 that was the 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 birth of Tobago knowing that a next son 
is on the brink of being great. Doing something I've always been intrigued by. What is it about Tobago and this will to greatness? Some of the, um, the, the, the amenities and exposures that we had in Tobago at the point in time, it brought out the best in us because we wanted to discover greatness at the point in time, you know? We didn't have like the Hazy Crawford Stadium or a stadium back in Tobago. We didn't have full media coverage of people coming to Tobago to view people from Tobago, like how people in Trinidad had the other opportunity. And we always just used to strive, working hard, working hard. And every time we come out, we was just being the best of what we could have been doing at the point in time. I believe the Tobago Heritage Festival played that big part because it was a national, national festival that Trinidad and Tobago could have viewed at the point in time, highlighting Tobago's products. I was happy. I was happy knowing that um, I was around a group of students that, that saw the process too at that point in time, you know? Not to say that they love Pan or they know about Pan around the time, but they have seen somebody who could become great at the point in time too, you know? Um, I could vividly remember my, 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 um, my, my teachers, um, Sir George and Mr. Aqui and everybody was like, you could be a great one. You could be a damn good one. Let's behave yourself. Education is the key. Mr. Solomon, black man got to keep on fighting for black man to get a little something. Let's keep on working hard. You will get it. You will get it. And that was just like motivational quotes that my parents in school, I call them my parents. I don't call them teachers, I call them my parents. They had the opportunity to involve these powerful motivational speech in me to, to just grow in that confidence. Man. Let's go back to when you first came to Trinidad to play with Renegades. Describe to us what it was like that first day walking up from the port to the pan yard. We were working up Charlotte Street and busy, 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 busy night, busy night. You know, some fet was what we was doing to take, was everybody looking forward to go to their fet, you know? 1992, Bees Melody, you know, walking up Charlotte Street. And Daddy, we reached, we reached yet? I said, no, nah, you ain't reached yet. But I hear in Pan playing, you know? So between Prince Street and Duke Street, but I hear in Pan playing. He said, um, that is my band across there, you know? I said, we're going to say, oh, so I said, no, nah, let me go, let me go, let me go. Walking up straight up Charlotte Street and across Park Street, I started here and I saw the brightness and I saw the cars back up on the road. I said, Daddy, this is it? He said, yeah, man. This is where the music teacher said for you to come and play. Walk into the pan yard. I was greeted by two individuals. I don't know if you used to, if you used to look at Renegades back in the days, there were two players in front of the band single tenor players, Robert Alwell, Allen and Selwyn John. They knew I was coming. Selwyn John. Yeah. Selwyn John. Snail, they'll call him Snail. They knew I was coming because Jet told them that the boy from Tobago coming down today. Will I take care of him from her? So when I walk in the panyard, fat, stocky, chubby, little Duvon Stewart walking through the gates of 138 Charlotte Street, I was like, wow, this is it. Fat man. Yeah, you, you, come, come. You ready? I said, yeah, man, I'm ready. I said, Daddy, said, well, go ahead. They took out a pan for me, set it up. I was like, wow. Playing a pan with a renegade sticker, held it. I was like, nice. I started to play the pan, and I realized the pan was not the style of pan that I just normally play. And I cried that night and said, Daddy, I can't make it, you know, because that pan is not the style of pan I can't play it, you know. I said, now nah, you go get it, you go get it, man. Tonight is your first night. I said, Daddy, this band big, you know. It's about close to 40, 50 ton of men here, you know. Because back in the days, my mom used to tell me that let's drop people who don't play good and thing, you know. Say, hey, I'm daddy, here, what you do for me? Next week, you go bring my pan with me. So nobody can't play my pan in here. So I bring my pan the following week. 
and that was how the synergy of, 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 of meeting players and being around a section of people accepting it with love and bringing nice apple J and gelita sort of drink and bacon shark and thing and you know, I get exposed to these wings and fries and all these kind of things you know I saw drugs I saw guns I saw everything on, 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 on that strip I've been real with you man I saw everything you know it, 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 it wasn't a place that it couldn't hide anything because it was the eastern side of Port of Spain got a dread warning Crime, Nelson Street, Queen Street, stuff like that. You know, the Harp, Laco Harp, Shafford Court. You know, just take care of yourself. Be safe. Now, saw it. Guns, drugs, love, murders, peace, everything. I saw everything right around that place. You know, and it was a decision for me to say, well, do you want to be on the dark side or do you want to be on the bright side? I'm sure you must have had to face that. Several times. Hell yeah, hell yeah, big time. Saw it all over. What was your routine like in those first few years that you played with Renegades? Coming from Tobago, every Friday on the Gelton, I used to sleep on the boat. My uncle was a chef on the boat. I used to sleep in his cabin. Walking up to Renegades Paniada from the port, me and my dad, just say, walk straight across. You see KFC? Walk two blocks down the road. It means Charlotte Street. Walk straight up until you reach 138 Shallow Street. That was my weekly routine, weekend routine, from Friday night until Sunday afternoon. Come back to school on Monday. I was never ever in Tobago on weekends around the carnival period. They're tuned, Lord Kitchener's The Bees Melody, arrangement by Jit Samaru, tuning of the pans by Bertrand Kelman, Band number 10 playing the bees melody, Amoko Renegades. Could you describe what the atmosphere was like in the Paniard at that time, in Renegades Paniard? Renegades having the people from Separia Hill and Quarry Street and Baselin Street, the, the, the lawbreakers coming out, everybody in their fancy hat and the, 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 them fellas used to come with the pants well seam, they're looking nice and sharp. That up, that, that up, you know, that up. Did you know Dr. Rat? Come on. That was, that was, that was one of my fathers in the band, I don't know, because uh, he used to come in the panyard with the hat, swing on one side. He didn't care, he just want to make sure Renegades is his prime interest. Big, big, big love and respect from the elders. And I, I got to learn a lot from them, you know, where the band came from, where they did, the kind of thing they sacrificed for the band to be inspired as today, you know. So all these things was like, this was really the place to me to be. Being invited to come to the band via Dr. Jit Samaru, being exposed to how I used to see back home on television, I'm seeing it in the real now, I'm seeing it in the flesh, the scene would process in the flesh, how, how the, the, the sleepless nights come around, how the camaraderie and the love amongst players come around and this kind of stuff like that. It, it started from that, 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 that point, you know. I didn't play for a couple of years between us. I, I had um, CXC examinations and stuff like that. Um, and I was just like frequently doing it, you know, frequently doing it. You know. when, I, when I left school, Signal Hill Senior Comprehensive, you know, I used to make my journey here alone. I used to stay in the cabin on the boat. Transportation from Port of Spain to Scarborough was easy. I was already on the boat ready to go back home, you know? So it was there. So and during this period, what was your relationship with Dr. Chit like? Not really big, you know. Because he was busy doing his 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 um his things, just the brief introduction, who he was and what he's doing, and again the passion of knowing what I wanted to be from the young age, just opened a whole different spectrum. At that point in time, seeing the process of how somebody creates music from an original composition, making a panorama song, a ten-minute panorama song. I used to be looking at him 
walking around the pannier, see what he was doing, how he was communicating with players, how he was distributing music, how he was talking to the to, to, to players and making them feel comfortable. Uh, when he when he does when he do the music, you know, his his reaction to hearing his idea comes to life. See how he feels, you know, when that, that sour patch come around, that 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 miserable feeling come because it, it happens in the Paniad is like a a, 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 um, a four season area. Again, summer, winter, spring and fall in one. Again, love, argument, cuss and hug ups inside of that 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 in that side of place, man. Yeah, in the Paniad. So I saw it all. I saw it all. I saw periods when the band, 1992, Bees Melody, you know, we were leading the Panorama by 25 and a half points. It's a Panorama semi-final going into the final to win. And out of the Blues, Exodus came. I saw disappointment. I saw arguments. I saw cursing. I saw fighting. I saw the dark side of wanting to be successful. We dust yourself off. 1993, we came back and we won. What do you think Dr. Jit saw in you when he made that call to your music teacher all those years ago? To be part of a fraternity to carry on your legacy for winning grand matches and virtues who presently at that point in time pass on. So you were chosen. I, cho I was chosen. Dr. Jit Samaru saw something in me, and uh, I believe it was that tipping point that he chose me to be one of the future prospects, to be a part of the fraternity, to carry on a legacy for when his generation of musicians, grandmasters, and virtuosos pass on. So it was like a process of him trying to pick and look for people to carry on a legacy of when they passed on. And it wasn't myself alone. Deceased Brian Brumont. Um, a, a, lot of, a lot of young arrangers around that point in time came out under the wings of Dr. Jet Samaru, who we saw even his son, Ahmed Samaru, handpicked and groomed and sent knowledge, sent wisdom, sent peace and love, and most of all, humility where music is concerned and look where we are today Ahmed Samaru is a well groomed champion arranger owner of a um, band leader for the supernovas is in the national steel orchestra Duvon Stewart presently musical director for the BPTT Renegades dream come true and our job now to do is to do what was done for us to go and look for that new that new prize to spread and to continue that, that legacy going forward. I was a chosen one. I believe that I was a chosen one from Dr. Jet Samaru. The confidence was always there. The support, even being alone at the teenage period in my life, you know, coming to Trinidad alone. The, the, the support from the family was even getting bigger. It was growing bigger, growing bigger all the time, you know. So 
communicating with the family and just keeping me close in the in the in the mind what I'm setting out to do. Again, I remember I said uh, I believe that I was placed to be the face for the family. So I can't get myself or put myself in a position to become a failure because a lot of energy in terms of trusting the process and making him be the love superior one where he, 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 took, he took the instrument to a different level. Not saying that everything was perfect at the point in time, I had my little ups and downs. Um, gambling, smoking cigarettes, um, you name it. Things that, that individuals could, could, could go through in a, in, a, in a period of time that people never really took or find the confidence to say. But I believe going down a dark road could set you up your future in the way how you pan it out to see. Being on the dark side, the smoking, the gambling, the drinking, the night lives, the, the, the um, woman, running down woman and all these kind of things. Um, taking your celebrity status to a, a, a place where you want to take advantage of it, but not use it to the point where you could heal and make something good of it. I believe when I was left alone by my parents, it was like for me to test the waters and see how are you going to navigate being in the storm? How are you going to weather the storm? I could have been a dead man today, but through God's grace and perseverance and the greatness that he has in me for me to do in the timeline that he has for me on planet Earth, I believe that I was given many leases on life to rise out of the ashes and to just fly and spread the wings of what God placed in me to do with my talent. And so humbly saying that never ever think that you, the human being, has the power to overcome any adverse condition, any hurdles on your own. We need to talk. We need to conversate. We need to confide and speak your issues and your problems to who you see fit that is close to you, that you have confidence with, that can help you come out of that storm. I had people supporting somebody might hear something, oh, I don't know, Duvon do this. They call up, I call my mother. I hear Duvon do this, and she started panting. She called one time, you know, with that being said and done, and I had a, not just one, not just 10, not just 20, I had a whole heap of individuals behind me supporting me. When the dark times was there, the dark days was there, because they didn't want to see a talent flop, a talent go to waste, a talent go down the drain and can't return. But then again, I persevered. I was back in a shell, analyzing life before Duvon Stewart being the celebra celebrity and life of Duvon Stewart being the celebrity. Where it could take you and looking at one of my greatest idols, Stevie Wonder, what it has done for him, what it has done for Michael Jordan and emulating the things that they have done to come out of the issues that they had, the problems that they went to, to where they are today. Going back to Tobago, reflecting on the situations that Trinidad brought for me. Bright lights, camera action, upper level club, the tunnel, the base, you're there, you're smoking, you're drinking, you wake up gambling, this and that. Reflecting those two parts, going back to Tobago, being around my family, being around everybody, it healed that, that wound that was inflicted in me. When was the first time you realized that your ego started to get in the mix and interfere, derail you a little bit? There was never ever a national competition or event that Duvon Stewart took part in that he hasn't won. I have won it all. So being in the limelight, your name becoming a household name, slowly, 
growing slowly, growing slowly to a point where everybody know who Duvon Stewart is. I believe I was I, I was hit hit by sudden flight, knowing that yeah you're on top of the world. You're there, you feel your reach. Yeah, you're having this nice time, you know, you're lining around, you're having kills at your at your disposal, you're drinking, you're smoking, you're, you wanna be hip. You, you believe that the world is in your hand, you control everything right now. Nobody can talk to country. you. Entourage. I'm not I had a lot of individuals being around me, you know, just running around. We, we, and I, I had was being around a lot of people too, you know. Being distracted on the course of what I was sent to Trinidad to do, I was totally derailed. I was derailed to the point going down the road of destruction. How old were you at that time? 21, 22. Um, just finished UE. Everything seems to be nice, but still playing with Renegades, still being around Dr. Jet Samaru, but it's like I was fooling myself and wanting to be somebody and couldn't be that person because I was always defeated by the elements that drew me to be in that destructive mode. Following a part where I see somebody smoking, somebody drinking, I'm gonna try, I wanna do it, this and that and that. You know, like you strike a match, you see the fire, you wanna put your fire on, you know you can burn here, but you still wanna put your hand in it. Did it all. And it drew me to a point where I was losing friends. I was losing Self-confidence, personally. I was losing the zeal to, to go on doing what I was setting out to do. Not knowing my parents were still strongly supporting me, being the backbone supporting me. Candace Andrews Brumont, the now captain of the BPT T Renegades, we have connected so much, so thick, to the point that we call ourselves brothers and sisters. She saw the destruction, she knew the destruction, she spoke to me about the destruction, and she's one of the individuals that rose me out of the gutter to come back on the track. I was still in communication with my family. They knew what was going on, they were still talking to me what was going on, but then again, stubbornness, you want to do it on your own, you want to be a feel he's a big man. Everything was just falling apart. And what set the track to come into formation again was going back home to Tobago. So, Recalibrating, refocusing, remodeling the process, came back to Trinidad, sat sitting on the promenade, chilling, Ross Thomas, who was the captain of Lohoketa Pan Groove. Doofy, what are you doing? I just do it, I just finished eating a box at KFC here. Yeah. I will come and do a tune by Lohoketa for my boy. And that moment is when I got the opportunity where somebody saw a piece of greatness to take it from Scarborough to Lohoketa Pan Groove arranging for my first ever steel band. What was it like working in Renegades under Dr. Jit? I, w I was, I, I, I believe I was receiving free tuition in molding and grooming a process for me to become an arranger. Again, quoting from the movie Cycle of Life, Lion King, drum lying. As much as Nick Cannon could play that snare drum, he couldn't read nor write music, but he was damn talented. Just trying to even the rough edges, see what was taking place, see what was happening, how he was doing it, preparing me for that moment for when that comes around. I left as a member in 1998, was my last year, 1980, uh, 1998 was my last year playing with the band. 
um, I believe I won a car in scouting for talent. So I got one of my first free cars. So I, that, that, was, that was some of the things that took me on a different level. You know, you got a car, you're driving from point A to B, you feel a hip, you're nice. You know, you're, you're in clubs, you're, you're dressing up nice. And I was fooling yourself. And I was just fooling myself. I was just taking myself down a path where I wasn't supposed to be. But Candace Andrews came along. Parents support came along again. Ross Thomas came, La Hoketa Pan Groove was the band, and I started my arranging career there. So you got this opportunity at La Hoketa. What was it like at the time? They didn't know who Duvon Stewart was, and Duvon Stewart didn't even know who Duvon Stewart was. What he could have, what, could he, what, he, what, he, what, he, what he was getting himself involved to. Ross Thomas, you know, he knew what he was seeing in the pan. He had when he was playing with Renny Gaze, we were all, always good friends. He said, well, try this, you know, do this, you know. It's like putting a plate of crab and dumpling, mash it up. So I, I had a meal in front of me. Kids from our community, phase four, phase five, phase six in La Hoketa, who never had no exposure to pan. They saw pan, courtesy the Robinsons family, um, Kurt Robinson, Michael Robinson, and the Robinson family. And we started there. And it so happened that um, Ross Thomas, was a part of a band called Supersonics that Mark Luquan was also a member of. And Russ was like, Mark, I've arranged up by me, you know. He nice, he bad, he bad, he bad. Come and check him out. Mark came to Locketer, show me. And he called Russ the other day. I have a song for you, you know. The name of the song is Fire and Steel by Denise Plummer. So Russ got this song from Mark. Russ brought this song for me. He said, well, play this man tune yet. I always do this tune for me. First arrangement for Lockheed became tent. The band never, first time the band made finals in a long time. Could be 20, 20 years out of the Panama finals in the single pan category. Fire and Steel, composed by Mark Luquan. The relationship between myself and Mark Luquan got bigger, deeper, bigger, deeper because he keep composing music, sending for me, do this and stuff like that. And that 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 La Hoketa story blew Duvon Stewart at that point in time again to the point where Mr. Mukhtar El Mukhtari, a French national who came to Trinidad and Tobago by accident been exposed to pan on the streets, looking for somebody to continue a process that was taking place in Nantes by Caliph's Atlantic Steel Orchestra, who the musical director and the pan builder at the point in time was, Tommy Critchlow. La Hoketa Pan Group was taking part in the semifinals in 2001. Back in the days, Panorama used to be on the streets in Frederick Street, semi-final night. Nice time. Everybody, vendors come out, people come out. It's everybody seeing Pan. And uh, Lockheed was beating everybody. We, was just, we were winning the Panorama that year. And he was like, yo, I want to talk with you, man. And I said, okay. You want to come to France for three months to do a little stint? I said, yeah. I was placed in a, in a country where I was exposed to different genres of music. Music from North Africa, Central Africa, South Africa, the Mediterranean, meeting, meeting up with such artists like uh, Yusuf Dor, Salif Keita, Mario Konaj, um, Jafli Farfan, the members of Kassav. Um, I got to meet Andy Narell for the first time across in France. Um, Miriam Akiba saw her performance of like that before she passed away. Um, it was like a, a, a whole new, fresh breath of air for me to, to put through the body because um, being in Trinidad and Tobago, we always, we always tend to, 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 to receive the information that is what is put out there for us to receive, but we never really take the time for us, the individual, to dig deep and go somewhere, listen to 
a next genre of music. Accept a next genre of music. And France was that place for me. So you were forced to open your mind? I wasn't forced to open my mind. I was forced to revert the egos that was embedded in me to come to a humble place and accept the fact that life is all about learning. Do ever think what you have in your mind is the superiority of what you are setting out to do. It could be how great it is. It could be how gigantic and knowledgeable. Everywhere you go is a place of knowledge. So remaining humble and accepting the food of love, which is music, it sets the mood and the tone for you to be educated in any form or fashion. So you say that was another transformation point in your Big, life? big, big transformation, man. Big, big, big transformation. Didn't even know about how indigenous Haitian music was, Tabu Combo, Universal Band, and all these kind of music from Kassav and, um, and, and all these um, bands from the, right in the Caribbean here. We never really get the opportunity to know about, not knowing about um, a sister by the name of Miss Carla Gonzalez. She was one of the, one of the um, backup singers for, for Kassav. And, and I was just feeling happy knowing that somebody from Trinidad and Tobago is around that, that, that genre of music. So it just kind of bring me more into hearing and to, to listening to these kind of stuff and listening to this kind of music. How do you think you were impacting on that scene? Big time, you know, it's like battered. I learning from them, them learning from me. I come back in Trinidad, create the music for Panorama, win. Come second, win. Just bring new fresh ideas to people to, 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 to relate to, you know? Every time I, uh, I came back from France, a wealth of knowledge was embedded in me. Trying to fusion what I learn but, and with what I know to put on the instrument to make people feel happy with the music, it was always a, a very engaging task for me. Just to experiment and do things my way with the help, with the help and assistance of traveling to different countries and to hear different genres of music. And to put all this creative mindset together and to bring it to Pan, bring it in Steel Pan, it was a, a, a blessing for people, the players, to accept what Duvon Stewart was doing. And they, and by itself, they, they engaged a, a level of confidence and having it growing. Mary Tones called me up to do small band. I became the first arranger to win two categories in one year. That would be single band and small band. Single, single band and small band, nine, um, 2002. With that, again, uh, I, 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 I forget to mention something, is that every time you do a job, every time you do a job, is the advertisement for the next job to come. Always be on point always be professional always try to be perfect you ain't gonna be perfect all the time but whenever you the individual and your work comes into the public realm always think about the next job to come like the tick sign on nike say just do it just do it every job that i do i treat it as an engagement for the next one. Last calling card. La Hoketa, Mary Tones. After Mary Tones, Our Boys in Tobago. After Our Boys in Tobago. Let me not jump over Tobago now. That you actually went to Tobago now. I got a call to, to, uh, to, come back, to, to come back to Tobago and arrange. What year was that? 2005. Patrick Arnold, Sayo Duvon. You just grow and you big up yourself, you're nice. I like how you, how you, how you process yourself, how you, how you do your thing nice, you know. Come back home and give our boys something now. I said, no problem, I would love to come back home and work for Our boys was the band. Free up was the arrangement. We didn't make finals. And well, well, that was a scare year for me too, you know. Band number eight, Our Boys. Band number nine, Amoko Renegades. I said, blow away. 
that was that was craziness. So I, the middle of our boys, jamming with my band and get them together, and I hear this big woo 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 coming from the back down my memorial, memorial park. I look behind, I see, I saw the little the red on top of the um, rhythm rock just spinning. I say, wow, really gaze, but I just went back in my, 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 my days and my memory. I used to be in there, you know, but you see what happened? This is where I want to be. But you know, one day, I could be there. And the band in front of me was All Stars, you know. So I was between. I was boom, boom. And I was just pull me one in the middle, but I was happy. I was happy. I was in my element knowing that going on the stage for Panorama and hearing the announcer, Mr. Williams, band number eight from Fort Street, Tobago, arranger, Duvon Stewart, I win. I ain't care about nobody. I win. Because I home in my house, 1986, 1987, 1988, and I hear the same man voice calling Len Boogsy Sharp 13 times, calling Jit Name nine times, calling Leon Spood Edwards. Yo, he had a call Duvon Stewart name one day, boy. And I was like, yes, we're going on that big stage. Single Pan, we never had the opportunity to perform with Lockheed Pan Groove in the big stage in the Savannah. I was a winner that year, man. I didn't care the band didn't make finals. I felt good knowing that I went back to the place, the bridge that was formed for me to cross to reach where I'm today, to go back home and to spread the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding and the little qualifications I may had at the point in time to the people who started the Duvon Stewart dream. <laughs>